Hi, it's Dina Tellerson, and welcome to my studio. I am so glad to have you here today. Say hello to my little dog, Scrunchie. So Scrunchie and I are here to talk with you about a topic that, if you're like me, uh, shipping your artwork from point A to B can be very stressful. And so I'm here to show you the way that I do it. Scrunchie and I are excited to have you here today, and it's going to be a great video. I hope you find super informative. So today's topic is all about how to uh, properly ship delicate artwork or artwork that might be textured, that type of thing, uh, bulky artwork, anything that, you, um, that you're worried about the surface of the painting or the artwork uh, being touched. So if you're like me, uh, getting your artwork from point A to point B can be a little bit stressful and you don't want any damage to happen to it. Um, I happen to be working in this highly textured style and so nothing, no packing materials can touch the surface of the paint uh, when it's en route. And so over the years I have really struggled with what to do with that and I have some solutions I hope you'll find helpful. So I've got some different materials that I'll go over with you. Um, talking about just standard boxes, uh, the pros and cons of standard boxes, and then get into um, art shipping cases and art transit cases. What are the differences between the two and how you might find them useful? So let's get started. Okay, so let's start first with the discussion about art transit cases. So this is a very lightweight, um, let's see who makes this, Gorilla Painter makes this. This is called a wet painting tote. This is something that you'd use um, if you're going and doing unplanned air work, or you might be um, going from location to location. It has a um, inside in here with some slats, and then your artwork just goes, your painting goes right in here while it's wet and you can safely go from A to B with this, uh, from um, end plein air up to back to your studio. But this does not, the, pro, the pros with this are it's lightweight, it's easy to carry, there's a carrying handle, that type of thing. The cons with this are you would not be able to put this in, or you probably could, but it, would be, it could likely be damaged. If you would try and um, send this, for example, um, ship this, uh, like UPS, US Mail, um, FedEx, something like that. It um, has a, it could be easily damaged because this is uh, not super sturdy. It's sturdy to get things from out in the field back to your studio, but it's not sturdy enough to go through the shipping process. So there's another kind of thing called a transit case, and let me get you one of those to show you that. As you can see, this is heavy. Uh, it's, it's made out of, I think, I want to say fiberglass, either fiberglass or metal. Uh, super sturdy, uh, reinforced corners. Uh, what this thing does, it's got straps. And I'm going to just rotate it in here. But basically, um, this thing you can ship your artwork and it is re uh, close with it, it is reusable. Uh, you can um, put your paintings into this, whether they're framed or unframed. Uh, you can put a little bit of bubble around them. For example, like these bowl bags. I get these bowl bags from Uline, but they're super nice. And you just put your artwork right in here, and it's closed on three sides. But um, super easy to use, and I do use these, so they're economical and they're um, they're I guess reusable so they're that's a good thing but what you can do is you can set these in here with bubble wrap or with nothing at all and just some soft padding and then you uh, take this to your ground shipper FedEx UPS uh, US mail whatever and or wherever in your country if you're in a different country uh, whatever your country uses uh, DHL for example and this thing will survive this particular case has gone many times um, to ship back and forth. The reason you might want to use a reusable crate like this is that, uh, let's say for example you have an art show and you need to send some artwork and um, you want to have something that's reusable, but you, what you don't want to do is you don't want to leave the case there. These cases are expensive, um, very expensive. 
and so you don't want to actually leave it at the location. You want them to ship it back. For example, if you have an exhibit, after the exhibit is over, then they would repack things in, the, in this um, art transit case, and then they would ship it back to you. So that's an example of when you want to use something like this. Um, now, if you are shipping one way only, so this, like for example, uh, you've maybe sold a painting uh, or you're shipping a painting to a gallery that represents you. Uh, that's often, most often what I'm doing is I'm shipping to, to uh, my gallery. So I live in Iowa and uh, then the galleries that represent me, I've got one in Texas, I've got one in um, Santa Fe, New Mexico. And so the problem is, is that's an awful long drive <laughs> with paintings and it uh, just doesn't make sense, so I need to ship. Now my galleries that are closer by, like Madison, Wisconsin, and you know, Amanda, that type of thing, I can drive them myself. Uh, Quad City Arts and Rock Island, Illinois, that's easy for me to drive to. But if I need to get it shipped, then I need something that I can ship my work in, that I know it can get there and I don't have a problem with it. So uh, there are a couple different brands that make this. Um, this one happens to be a Titan Strong Box by Master Pack, and they're out of New York. And this is, this one um, is another company that I use, and this one is by Airfloat, and it's their Strong Box system. And you can get these things, and um, let's see. Oh yeah, and then also, just to compare, I'm just gonna bring you a, show you here. If you look at like a cardboard box, like if you just try and ship, if you have something really small, you know, yeah, you can ship it in something really, you know, something, a painting that is small, that's lightweight or whatever. Uh, you could put it in bubble and put it in a, a kind of a thin little small box like this, maybe even double box it, um, and it should be okay. But if you've got like larger artwork or heavy artwork, uh, let me grab one of my paintings here. For example, this painting, I would either have to build a box or do something like this. The better option is to use these um, art shipping boxes. They're designed just for shipping either framed or unframed art, and uh, they really work super well. So you might be wondering, why do I need to even use a shipping, an art shipping box? Why can't I just use a cardboard box? Well, I had, um, I had a experience, a bad experience, where I had uh, taken in some artwork and I had taken it to my local shipping, uh, I won't say who it was, but I had taken it to my local shipping pack and ship company, and they wrapped tissue paper around the artwork, and then, um, and then they had, uh, had cardboard, and the cardboard was flat up against the painting, and what ended up happening was, uh, it had gone to uh, Scottsdale, Arizona for a gallery that represented me and when the gallery got it, it was very hot and it would have been hot during the shipping. It was an oil painting and the tissue paper stuck to the surface of, it was a nightmare, stuck to the surface of the painting. And so they ended up having to ship it back to me, it couldn't be sold, that type of thing. And so then I was thinking, oh my goodness, this was years ago. What am I going to do? So I began a search to try and find art shipping boxes, um, you know, that could work so that when the um, painting is uh, the painting is sitting there, it will not be covered or touching any kind of tissue or bubble or anything like that. So if you have your painting framed, it's not such a big deal because as long as the paint doesn't go past the top of the frame, then you could put cardboard over it and it's an easy ship. But if you've got something, uh, for example, like what I have here with this painting, there's no frame on it and it's this very heavy texture. And so the paint is left bare really and is, uh, is I guess, uh, it, it's much more fragile to ship. So what uh, you might be wondering, what is inside of these things? You can get these things. Uh, also, Uline makes these too. Uh, you can... Um, get them in either lined or unlined. You always, if possible, want to buy the lined version. So the lined version, here's what it comes with. The lined version has, on the top and the bottom, it has this um, plastic 
uh, which can withstand, so the box itself can withstand a puncture, uh, depending on what grade you get, a puncture of 350 pounds or 500 pounds coming at it like a forklift, and it would not damage the, the artwork. Um, it comes with this uh, foam that sits on the top, and then you get this inside piece of foam, and then a bottom piece, and then the lining on the bottom as well. So it looks like this. So basically, if you were doing something that was framed, you would just stick it in here, and then you take this uh, the square foam, and then you cut. Uh, you can. It's perforated. And so you just tear out the ones that you don't want, and you put that in there, close it up, get it closed, <laughs> get it closed. You have the, let's see here. So basically you would get it closed like this. So, oh my god. in and then you tape it. You know, I will show you the process that I use. I actually do a little different process uh, because I don't want to have the foam touching the top of my painting. What I do is I discard this foam, this piece. I'll use this one. And so on an unframed painting, I actually take out this piece. So unframed painting, I put the painting in like this and I Velcro to the back of the canvas. I put uh, removable Velcro on here and then I Velcro it into the bottom and then the foam goes around the outside and then that way and then there's nothing touching it. So I have shipped dozens and dozens of paintings with no problem using this method. Uh, what's also nice about this is um, you can take it to your shipper and then uh, oftentimes they'll say like how much insurance do you want to put on it? I don't put any insurance on it um, because th these are um, designed to withstand like this particular version, 500 pound um, puncture and uh, the edges are um, super duper strong and they're reinforced. So this particular one, it tells you on the back what it can withstand. So this particular one, this version, can withstand a 350 pound burst test. Um, and so and then like these bigger ones I've got um, will withstand the 500 pound burst test. So I actually uh, can save money on my shipping by not putting insurance on the painting when it goes through. So. Um, so on the shipping, when you ship, when you take it to, I can have it go like, uh, for example, UPS or FedEx ground, DHL ground, and then not add any additional insurance to, uh, to the shipment, which saves a lot of money. So these little boxes are pretty amazing. They are considered almost as rugged as using a, a wooden crate to, to ship your work in. They come in like... Uh, you do sculpture for example they come in you can get them like <clears throat> four inches deep six inches deep or deeper and um, so this one is like a 350 pound puncture test the lined one um, this other one here is a 500 pound puncture test so you can actually save yourself money when you go to ship either like DHL or UPS FedEx or whatever you're using well thank you so much for coming by to visit me here today in the studio I hope to see you again if you'll come and watch part two. In part two, I'm going to take you step by step and show you how I box up um, my paintings to go to art galleries. And I'm using the Velcro method and all the little tips and tricks uh, to get these things safely and securely ready to ship. So until next time, it's Dina Tollefson. All my best to you. Bye-bye.